is this course going to be comparative okay. between the, the, the Quranic narrative of, of the life of Musa and the um, biblical and the, um, you know, the Judeo-Christian um, narrative, you know, because obviously um, Moses is, is a figure that is uh, discussed in other religious circles as well. Right. So is, is it going to be a comparative class? And the answer to that is uh, no, that's, that's not really the main objective of this course. Okay. It's not a comparative religion course. Okay. Uh, we definitely are focusing and there is a heavy, heavy emphasis on the Quranic narrative. Okay. And uh, what is it that Allah tells us about Musa and his life? Uh, and what did the Prophet وسلم, tell us about um, about Musa. Now, definitely we also take into consideration some of the Judeo-Christian narrations. Yeah. We do do that. Um, uh, but I wouldn't say that that's a primary source okay. for, the, for the content of, of the course. Would it, is it fair to say that perhaps maybe it's a supplemental source? Yeah, I think um, in, certain, in, certain, um, in certain sections of the course, yeah. uh, we, we definitely look at, uh, look at some of those historical narrations and, and see what kind of uh, academic and, and historical value they can add. It might be a question or a sort of critique which is, oh, I already know the story of Musa. Okay. I already know the story of Moses. Or I've already heard it tons of times. So is this just going to be um, a repetition of the same story that I've heard before? Mm. Uh, and my answer to that would be that not, no, it's not meant to be a repetition of that. Is it possible that there will be certain, um, uh, certain aspects of the story of Musa that you might have heard before? Absolutely. But I don't think that takes away from the value of the course at all because what we try to do is, again, and this goes back to the objectives of the course, yeah. is we want to, um, we, this is really about having a relationship with the Qur'an. Yeah. Um, and gonna, so a lot of times... I was going to uh, comment on that as well because it's like one might have recited Surah Al-Fatiha so many times but like and even other surahs in the Quran yeah but you still continue to recite and repeat and derive new gems and new lessons and it's like it's an unending ocean well that's one of the miracles of the Quran is, is each time you read it with that kind of focus yeah. and that kind of um, you know the, just an open heart and yeah. and and um, when you when you read with that kind of like attentive nature yeah. and kind of um, uh, that humility and that focus yeah. each time you have a new reading you actually notice something different each time uh, and that's really what I want this course to be for the students so is an exploration like I want you to explore the verses in the Quran and, and I want you to interact with them I want it's not just about oh what lessons can I derive and then can I share with you right. yeah obviously there's a lot of those things that that we have prepared that, that we want to share with the students but really it's an opportunity for the students to be in an environment that's conducive for them to read these verses and extract something very personal yeah. and only you can do that this is this is your quran this is this is a book that was sent for your guidance and and i want the students to feel that and i think it's fair to say that uh, there aren't many classes or programs or seminars or even books that approach the story of musa from the quran using the dabbur, using deep reflection. And then the other thing is also there is an aspect of reviewing the story of Musa and kind of um, pondering over it on a deeper level uh, and, and in a very relevant, um, in a very, in, in a manner that's very relevant to the challenges that we are facing and witnessing today. Okay. You know, um, because the nature of these stories of the Quran is they are timeless. Yeah, Musa lived thousands of years ago. The story took place a long time ago yeah. and the Qur'an was revealed a long time ago But you know what? That's one of the reasons why it's in the Qur'an is because the lessons that are that we are able to derive from the story are timeless yeah. It will apply to so many different eras and times and places And this is um, why there's a lot of re and this could be one of the re reflections one can look at as to why there isn't that like why certain stories in the Qur'an lack particular details yeah, again, because... To make it timeless. Absolutely, absolutely. So, so it is relevant, you know, until the end of time, until the Day of Judgment. Okay. That's, that's one of the beauties of the Qur'an. Um, it's something that makes it so special. So we need to keep re-reading. Gotcha. There needs to be this, this renewal, uh, uh, this re-awareness with the story and with the morals and with the lessons because times are changing. Yeah. 
events are changing, but you know what? A lot of things are actually repeated. Okay. Uh, and, and so, you know, in, you know how say history repeats itself? Well, there's you another know? quote that I like better. Yeah. Is that history does not repeat itself, but it often rhymes. <laughs> Interesting.